I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my review of Deadpool 2. I give the movie a C+. The mutant soldier Cable journeys from the future to present day in order to kill a young mutant named Russell. Russell will one day grow up to be a very dangerous, very evil mutant that kills Cable's family. So, Cable wants to eliminate Russell long before that could happen. It's a classic question, if you go back in time and kill young Hitler, would you? Cable, it very much would. So, Deadpool recruits a team of mutants in order to help save and protect young Russell. Now, that's the overall premise of the movie, but these films are really designed to just have some crazy fun and some wild, outrageous, highly R-rated jokes, make tons of pop culture references, break the fall wall. You're in there just to have a good time. And for the most part, I had a good time. But there were some key changes to the plot that ruined the viewing experience for me. So while I was laughing and having an overall good time, once that point happened, it was pretty much all down here from there. And so your mileage may definitely vary when you see this film. One of the things I liked about the movie was Josh Brolin's performance as Cable. Now, he doesn't get to present Cable with all the powers that Cable has. Uh, Cable is supposed to be telepathic and telekinetic, and that uh, never happens in the movie. But as far as being a strong, menacing presence, he's fantastic. Uh, he is shorter uh, than as he appears in the comics, and there's even a joke about that in the film. Uh, and it's pretty much fine for the majority of the movie, but there is a point where the characters are all standing side by side, and when you see Deadpool being taller than Cable, uh, it does <clears throat> take a little bit from his uh, menacing uh, presence. But overall, Josh Brolin's performance is fantastic, so it's just wonderful that Josh Brolin not so only be a fantastic role in t this superhero movie, but also, of course, in uh, Avengers Infinity War. So I don't know what franchise is going to get him next, but I'm quite sure uh, his phone is probably ringing off the hook with various studios trying to get him to be a part of some type of next superhero franchise. Now, I won't bother to try to say which jokes were my favorite throughout the movie. I mean, they come left and right up in town. There's so many uh, references and uh, gags and things. You probably missed the first time I saw it. I'll probably miss it the second time I see it or even the third time. But still, uh, there's a lot of wonderful uh, sight gags, uh, verbal gags, action gags throughout the film. Uh, but certainly my personal favorite was the very, 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 Blinking and missing a cameo of some of the X Men. There's a scene where <laughs> Deadpool is in the X Men mansion and he's complaining about why are there any other X Men. And then, for the briefest moments, you see the uh, other X Men from the uh, other uh, X Men franchise or such so a side franchise uh, briefly appear in the movie, and that was fantastic. So, I love that. Uh, that was my highlight uh, of the movie. Now, although the Deadpool character and brand overall is never really focused on great stories, uh, there is a turning point in the movie which pretty much ruined the experience for me, and that's when uh, his team X-Force die <laughs> as soon as her mission begins. Deadpool creates this uh, very interesting team of mutants, and before they get to have any kind of action, they all wind up being killed. Now, the way they're killed is hilarious, and it is in keeping with the uh, Deadpool uh, theme of surprises, and you think one thing's gonna happen, but it doesn't. But still, I was looking forward to certain, to seeing ca these characters, especially Shatterstar. Uh, he was one of my favorite X-Force characters, so uh, he gets to do nothing. <laughs> so it's like all these interesting potential characters totally gone, totally pointless. And once that happens, uh, all that's remained is Domino, and you know she's not going to die because her power is good luck. Uh, obviously, Deadpool is not going to die. I mean, it's almost impossible for him to be killed. Uh, Cable, extremely unlikely that he's going to die. So it's like, well, there's no stakes after that. 
Uh, eventually, Colossus comes in to help, and Nega, uh, Sonic Teenage Warhead comes in to help. And Nega Sonic Teenage Warhead has a, a excellent friend. She comes to help. You know, they're going to survive. So it's like, well, the sticks are just gone. Another problem is uh, the kickoff point of the movie is that Vanessa, Deadpool's girlfriend, gets killed. Deadpool does something that winds up getting her caught in the crossfire. She dies, so he spends the movie trying to reconcile with that death. <clears throat> it's a very uh, interesting journey for him to go uh, as far as the character. And then at the very, very end, he just uses Cable's time machine to go back in time and save her. So, you know, that's Again, in keeping with the Deadpool brand, but it's like, well, we just went through this giant emotional journey and growth for this character, and now it's pretty much meaningless. So, like, other than making sure Vanessa can be in the next movie, they make a next movie. It's like, well, this is just all pointless. A whole wonderful journey was totally pointless. The last thing that really disappointed me was the juggernaut being in the movie. Now, in the film, uh, he's presented as... Ooh, there's this mysterious super bad guy that's super, super dangerous. Who can it be? And surprise, it's the Juggernaut. But instead of it being uh, Vinnie Jones like he was in the uh, uh, X-Men movies of old, it's this totally giant CGI character. And I understand that a lot of people were disappointed by the Vinnie Jones style of Juggernaut, and I was too. But it's like, it's there, and now there's just this radical change, and he's like, eight foot tall and super sized, so he's more comic booky. And uh, Deadpool makes this fantastic joke uh, referencing uh, the Hulk in the, the Avengers movies. Uh, so, you know, it's fine, but still, personally, I'm just sick of uh, these strong guys having to be eight foot tall and the size of, like, two or three doorways, so you know they can never walk through a doorway or they can never uh, walk through walls or they need, like, reinforced beds. You know, it's just... It's just annoys me, and since he's CGI and Colossus is CGI, it's like, you know, die, these characters are really going to, you know, die or get killed or anything. So it's like, okay, fine, you know, I'm laughing, but still, it's like, I, I, I'm i just pretty much turned off by giant uh, superhero guys all trying to be the Hulk, okay? You know, they try to make the thing the Hulk. They uh, made Doomsday uh, like the Hulk. Even the Hulk shouldn't be the Hulk. You know, they, you don't need eight foot guys that super size to be the strong guy, okay? Superman, he's just a little taller than six foot, has a nice size build, uh, except for Henry Cavill, I think he uh, overtended a bit, but still, you know, he can move the moon. So, you know, if the audience is willing to believe that a character like Superman can move the moon, you don't need some eight foot giant troll thing to be your strong guy, okay? So that's just, I found very annoying. A unique benefit of Deadpool is that it's firmly accepted that what you see in the trailers might not necessarily be what you see in the final cut of the movie. Uh, they'll do various improv throughout the production, and some of it will be made strictly for the trailers. Some of it's just uh, be uh, PG or broadcast ready, and then when you get to see the movie, it's very raunchy. So that's fine, but still... Uh, I was hoping to see X-Force, and we don't get X-Force. Uh, we go on this wonderful, you know, journey with the Deadpool's character, which is rendered totally pointless, and, you know, there's no stakes when certain characters are, are clearly going to be the ones that we follow through, so it's like, all right, I'll just watch the jokes and laugh, but still, uh, yeah. Oh, and there's a lot of innocent bystanders that gets killed. Okay, they go on a mission to save this one kid, and oh, great, you save this one kid. What about the dozens and dozens of other innocent bystanders and innocent civilians that get killed? You know, they, we don't, you know, care care about that. Okay, that's that's nothing that uh, really bugs me. So yeah, a uh, very funny film. You know, I didn't hate it, but you know, once the stakes were gone, once X Force was gone, once uh, Vanessa was alive again, it's like, well. This was funny, but pointless, so that's why I'm giving this movie a C+. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. 
Be sure to leave whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hero Mike. Thank you for watching, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.